Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another Lightroom editing tutorial. Today we're going to be checking out how to edit like Samuel Alkins. Once again, it seems like you guys really like to edit like Samuel Alkins. It is actually my second most popular video on my channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate it. Just hit the subscribe button up here somewhere. Should be over there for you. So let's get started. Just getting real with it. I'm sure that most of you came for the free preset and that is completely okay. The free preset is the first link in the description, so please go check it out. But I do urge you to watch the rest of the video as well because just by having the preset is not enough. I think it's really important to understand how to use it and how to apply it to take your photos to the next level and actually know what's going on with the preset so you don't just slap it on and go from there. So getting straight into it, I'm gonna start off by just going through Samuel Elkin's feed, his recent post and his editing style, just discussing it before I get into the actual editing tutorial and then how to apply that to certain photos. So first things first, from my research, I've seen that he has actually just been shooting the majority of his photos on film recently. Um, so in saying that, it doesn't really have a consistent editing style for the most part. Uh, obviously film is very dependent on the type of film that you're using and because he's using so many different types of films and cameras, each photo will have a different look and feel to it. What is consistent about his style is the way he takes his photos. But again, when it comes to the editing style, not really that consistent. We can see we have like a super faded one over here. This one is pretty modern with very minimal editing. I think that's one thing that he does very well with these photos is just the initial photos are so good that it doesn't really need much editing to make it better, if that makes sense. I think a lot of his editing is more of color correcting rather than color grading. If you know anything about film, um, making videos on Premiere Pro, you might understand the difference between color correcting and color grading. Correcting is pretty much just fixing the skin tone colors, fixing the temperature and the white balance, whereas color grading is adding certain effects and styles to that image. Even from his website, we can see that he has this like super faded brownish look to it, but then here we have a nice blown out white looking edit to it. So just so many different styles to his work. So it is really difficult to define one style and say this is the Samuel Elkins editing style. I've just chosen out a few of his photos to have a look at and to once again just compare the different styles. It seems that generally he likes to go for a more faded look, just fading the blacks a little bit, fading the highlights, as well as, well as adding a little bit of browns into the shadows. We can see that really nicely over here, um, also in this photo and this photo, but Again, I think a lot of these were taken on film cameras, so it could very well just be from the actual film stock. So I guess this is kind of a tutorial that aims to replicate film, the film look. Once again, that's one of my other most popular videos. So getting into the developed settings, I'm just gonna use this image as the reference image um, because I feel like it's kind of similar to the one that I have of Quinn that I took the other day. So we're gonna use this as the reference and then I'm gonna drag this one onto the actual editing. Um, as we can see from this one, the blacks are really faded and almost a little bit crushed. Uh, the highlights are also a little bit faded, but Again, I think it's like super minimal editing. So just to go through it super quickly, I'm gonna start just by bringing the highlights down a little bit, taking the shadows up a little bit, um, maybe even boosting those whites a bit, and then taking down those blacks for sure. Up next, I'm gonna go onto the tone curve, and this is where I think the real magic is. So I'm gonna start by bringing up this tail end to add in a little bit of the fade. Then we're gonna bring down the shadows over here, as well as taking up the highlights, just creating a nice S curve. I'm also gonna bring the highlights up, I mean down at the top end, just because the highlights are a little bit faded in his image as well, they aren't pure white. So we are bringing that down. Just gonna add another point in the shadows over here. And already we are starting to get that look. Might even add a little bit more fade. Not too much, we don't wanna get crazy. Um, let's take the midtones up a little bit. It's all just super intricate editing in my opinion. Up next I'm just going to jump over to the grain and I think he has a very subtle grain on this photo we can see in the face of the model over here. So I'm going to bring it up to around 30. I don't want to go too crazy with it but that looks good for me. Just having that nice subtle grain. 
Up next, I'm going to play around with the hue and the luminance of the green in the background. It seems that he has almost more of a yellow orangey green and this does seem like it was taken at sunset so that definitely does contribute to it but you might not have your photos taken at sunset like I didn't either. So bringing those greens into more of the yellow side and then also bringing up that luminance just to brighten it up in the background. But I mean already we are starting to see the same look and feel coming through. We could even bring down the blacks just a little bit more. That is looking good. And if you wanted to, this is just specific to my photo, but I'm just gonna brighten up Quinn's face over here just to add a little bit more detail into the shots. So that's looking good. Last thing I'm gonna do is add a graduated filter over the bottom here. It seems like he might have done this as well. Just adding a bit more darkness into the bottom of the photo. You could even do it coming in from the left like that. Just bringing the focus right into the center. I'm also just gonna desaturate the skin tone just a little bit. We don't, get, we don't wanna get too crazy with this though. Let's bump up those shadows. But I think that is looking good. From the before and after, we can see that we've added a nice almost crushed faded black look to it, as well as bringing up the luminance and the saturation of the greens in the background. Obviously this preset won't work for all kinds of photos, but I think it does replicate this edit very closely. So just once again, I wanna reiterate that he doesn't necessarily have one editing style. This is just one of the styles that he has. I think it's important to edit a photo in order to achieve a certain mood or feeling. What do you want the photo to communicate? What do you want people to feel when looking at the photo? For example, when looking at this photo over here, it's edited nicely in black and white, giving it more of a nostalgic vibe to it. This one over here is more of a film look to it. Again, giving that nice nostalgic feel, uh, almost like flipping through an old photo book of one of your road trips. But then if we look at something like this, it's a lot brighter and a lot more modern. Maybe this was for a magazine. I'm not really sure what the purpose of this was, but again, it really just depends on the purpose of the image and what you want people to feel from it. So don't settle on one specific editing style. I don't think Samuel Elkins has. Try shooting film for a bit, see what you get out of that. Try different editing styles, but yeah, this is just this for right now. Again, the preset will be the first link in the description and I will upload it to my selfie page. The preset is free, so download it as many times as you like, but I have put it up for a pay as you wish service. So if you do think that this was of value to you and you do have a few extra bucks lying around, I would really appreciate your support. Um, even if it's just $1, $2, whatever works for you. Um, but if you don't, it's all cool. No worries, download it for free and I hope this helps your creative process. Speaking of which, I just released a brand new preset pack so if you wanna go check that out as well, it is on the page, it's a nice adventure, travel -y feel kind of preset pack. Um, but I am running a special at the moment, this is $35 but if you sign up to my Patreon account, it is only $10 and you get the preset pack included with all these extras as well. So I think it's well worth the cost. You'll get a lot of extra knowledge in terms of photography and video and business development when it comes to photography. So please go check it out. I would love your support on there as well. But in saying that, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time. Please make sure to follow Samuel Elkins as well. He is a massive inspiration to my own work. He has been for ever. Uh, I've been following him pretty much since I started Instagram. So if you aren't already, check him out. His work is incredible. I probably wouldn't be at the point I am on YouTube if it wasn't for him. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you are new around here. We are approaching the 100K very soon. But in saying that, I'm gonna leave this here. In the meantime, remember to stay weird, don't die, and make it happen. I'll see you guys in the next one.